Today we're turning this nonsense into this well-organized pantry cabinet featuring really basic vertical sliding drawers. Boom! Before we start with the build, I want to tell you that I recently had a lot of fun screen printing and making two new products that are now available in my online shop. It all started because I wanted to make a cool print with an inspiring message to help you be motivated and empowered and I also wanted to try to print over fabric. So I got a bunch of black tote bags and had a lot of fun printing my logo on them. So if you want to support my work and get one of these for yourself or to offer a friend or family member, go ahead and check out the link below. Now let's finally get started with these awesome vertical pantry drawers. This project was built entirely with leftover pieces of wood I had laying around, so you'll see a couple of steps here that are not essential, determined by the fact that some pieces were not thick or wide enough for the purpose but hopefully you can still find them useful and entertaining. I will be making these vertical drawers out of Baltic birch plywood and yellow MDF. I started by cutting the parts needed for the backs according to the 3D drawing I made beforehand and went ahead gluing them together to get thicker panels. Some of the plywood had a factory finish on it, so in order to laminate the yellow MDF to it, I had to sand the surface first to remove that finish. A vacuum bag was used to get even pressure along the entire faces. While I have to wait for the panels glue up, I can keep cutting the fronts out of 18mm Baltic birch plywood. My kitchen cabinets are all made out of birch and yellow MDF, so I kept the color scheme here too. Because I'm using scraps and only had enough plywood to make two fronts, I combined two strips to make the third front. The halves were quickly joined with floating tenons and glue. You have probably seen these blue clamps a hundred times on my videos because I love how convenient, lightweight and strong they are. Let's keep going further, cutting the shelves while another part of the project has the glue setting up. To these guys the plywood joint on this third drawer front, I decided to create a small detail and routed a groove right in the middle to embed the strip of yellow MDF. I know Rockler has a bunch of innovative tools, being one a specific dust shoe for the router table, but I haven't got one yet, so I decided to minimize the amount of floor sawdust by attaching the dust collection pipe to a heavy object and have the majority of the groove dust collected instantly. I sneaked down the cut and got it just right at the second attempt.
To make sure the inlay was getting even pressure, I clamped it in the workbench vise for a few minutes. The next day, I could open the vacuum bag and remove all the three backer pieces that are now much thicker and resistant to wobbles. The bag is easily stored away on a small roll. I gave these a pass or two on the jointer to remove any glue squeeze out off of the edges and trim the other edge to the final width on the table saw. I also cut a few strips of plywood to create supports for the drawer slides and made three L-shaped components. A lot of things were not ideal about this project, but sometimes the fun really is on finding solutions to certain parts of a project. The drawer slides I was using were a bit too long to fit inside the cabinet with the drawer fronts hiding them. What I did was to create pockets with a straight router bit in the inward faces to allow some extra room for the slides. To assemble the structure, I use pocket holes and simple butt joints with screws in areas where they are not visible. Because I wanted the shelves to have clear walls, I had to subtract the thickness of the 5mm acrylic sheet to the width of the shelves. To make sure the boards are attached perfectly square, I utilize these handy corner clamps from Rockler. This is the back of the drawer and it will never be seen, so it's okay to drive screws straight through the material. I'm now attaching a strip of yellow MDF that will hide the top drawer slide to achieve a cleaner look. The bar clamps come in handy again to make sure I attach the fronts aligned and perpendicular to the top and bottom pieces. I sand everything smooth and spray three coats of water-based varnish that I actually forgot to film. Now it's time to cut all the acrylic walls for each shelf and I started by changing the table saw blade for a multi-material blade that is more suitable for plastics than the ATB that I use for wood. It went pretty well for the scrap pieces that still had the protective film on them but when I changed into cutting a repurposed sheet which didn't have the plastic film on, problems started to happen. A buildup of material was developing on the underside of the cut, which made the material very hard to push forward and get stuck on the blade. 
So I stopped and applied a line of masking tape in the line of the cut and it solved the problem. The acrylic strips had two sizes, being the shallower ones meant to be positioned in the front of the shelves and the taller ones in the back to keep the groceries from tipping over when the drawers are opened and closed. I removed the sharp edges with the deburring tool and didn't take much time sanding. I wanted to try to make the edges clearer by heating them with a blowtorch and it actually worked out pretty good. You can still see some blade marks since I didn't take time sanding the edges but honestly, for this project, I didn't care. There is a big improvement already compared to the frosted edges. I can use a template to mark the screw holes position on every piece. It can also be used on the shelf edges since it's a good idea to pre-drill the holes to receive the screws. To keep the shelves from falling off the pins, I made little pockets on the router table to accommodate them and my cat's Moses stop block came in super handy. To install the pins, I utilized this shelving jig from Rockler and selected just some of the holes as I don't really need the entire height of the drawers to be filled with holes. You can find all the links to Rockler tools using this project in the description below in case you're interested. I can now install a strip of wood close to the middle of the top face that will later receive the upper slide. The upper slide will be positioned vertically just like in any other traditional drawer and the bottom slide will be positioned horizontally. You can certainly install both of them vertically as it will be stronger and less wobbly but since my pantry cabinet is up and I'm so small I wanted to preserve as much lower shelf space available. I attached the slides to the L-shaped fixtures and installed the whole contraption to the top of the kitchen cabinet. To get the correct spacing measurements, I simply consulted the SketchUp file drawing I made previously and transposed the dimensions to the real cabinet. The slides that I'm using here were supposed to be click to open slides, but they didn't work very well. They were actually replaced by regular inexpensive, but yet super nice Amazon slides that can be purchased at a very cheap price. I'll leave the link below. 
It seems to work really well even with the bottom slide being positioned horizontally and now I can finally place the shelves with the adjustable pins and enjoy my much better organized and spacious pantry cabinet. I'm super happy about this new improvement and I'm sure you can do the same to a messy pantry cabinet you have somewhere hidden in your kitchen. A big shout out to Rockler for being such a great supporter of my work and to all my Patreon members for believing in me. Stay tuned for the next video that should come out really soon and if you want to support my work too head over to patreon.com slash gethandstory or visit my online store and get one of the new prints, bags or a classic t-shirt. Thanks everyone for watching and go get your hands dirty!